You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Hey, look at that. There's some music. That means it's time for Animal Talk. Some of the best doggone pet people on the planet here to to help you with your pets. Whatever the problem is, pet professionals stand by ready, willing (laughs) to help you out and just uh, have some fun and talk about some uh, critical animal issues. Sitting behind uh, the glass today. Oh, uh, Matt Fox and I kind of... uh... I accessorized with the studio today. You did? I did. He's a man in black. <laughs> and uh, I'm Jamie Flanagan, just making sure everybody has a good time. Animal Talk, it is America's Pet Show. And on the show with us today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a very endangered species. Matt, what would you think if I said there's a, a, a mammal on this planet and there's only 20 of them left. I would say we're in serious trouble. Wow, we're in it's some like, serious... It's like, it's like bees. Trouble. Right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so there's a, a dolphin outside of uh, Mexico, I want to hmm. say. Uh, um, and uh, it's, it's, in, it's in trouble. And uh, there's a, a great group of cons- conservationists uh, started by uh, Paul Watson. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he was one of the people who founded Greenpeace. And he felt Greenpeace wasn't doing enough. Hmm. <laughs> so wrap your head around that. <laughs> Greenpeace wasn't doing enough. So Paul left and he started uh, the Sea Shepherd organization. Because oh, wow. Paul, Paul always says, uh, if the oceans die, we, we die. die. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so he, they really try to safeguard the oceans and the really messed up things happening in the ocean. And uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Captain Peter Hammerstead uh, of the Sharpie of the Sea Shepherd fleet. Uh, coming up here today on Animal, talking about that, uh, talking about what what they got going on, uh, and this animal that uh, I, I think there's only like 20 of them left. Oh, now Peter's going to Peter's going to clue us in uh, about that whole story. So not only are they endangered, they are critically almost critically gone, critically in, uh, endangered. That's um, sad. And why they're endangered? It's it's just greed, and it, it comes down to just greed. And we're, but we're going to talk more about that coming up. Before you know it, Matt, and uh, we're also uh, just going to have some fun yeah. uh, talking about there's a crazy story I came across um, mm-hmm. about a rat winning a gold medal. I know a rat winning a gold medal. <laughs> OK. Uh, uh, OK. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's more, uh, one more gold medal than I've won, but a rat. That's okay. it. Cambodian landmine detecting rat awarded with a miniature gold medal. <laughs> For life saving bravery. That that's it, isn't um, it? Um yeah. So is there anything that uh, you would win a gold medal for, Matthew? <laughs> um yeah, my driving maybe. That that's about it. Yeah. Or my personality, because I have a gold winning personality. That is it. So uh Magua Magua can search the area the size of a tennis court for landmines in thirty minutes, which would take a human with a metal detector four days. <laughs> So the, the, a rat can, can cover uh, the amount of ground uh, in 30 minutes that it takes a person to cover in four days. Crazy. Um, and and he, it's saving a lot of lives because uh, there's uh, these landmines. Uh, it's, a, it's a tragedy in, in some of these countries where they, they've just been, you know, there's been unrest and the, these landmines get out there mm. and then, they're, and then the, the unrest either moves or dissipates. And, and then, it, you know, the people are getting hurt bad by these I know it's dangerous that uh, these rats have to do this work of uh, finding and uncovering these <laughs> landmines. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't end well for for some e- and many of the rats, right? Uh, but they do, and again, covering the area uh, in thirty thirty minutes that it, it would take a human. That's craziness. Four days to so. do. So <laughs> I, I, I'm a gold medal for sure. Yeah, absolutely. For that. But uh, like I said, uh, today on the show, we're talking about other conservation issues and, and, and saving. And it's, it's uh, there, I, Matt, I mentioned there's a creature that uh, is critically uh, in, endangered uh, in the waters. And, and the, the folks that are, are helping patrol the waters and doing a, a fantastic job are, are the people with the Sea Shepherd Project. Uh, and with us today, Captain uh, Peter Hammerstead uh, from the Sea Shepherd. Captain, welcome aboard. Thanks for being with us on Animal Talk. Uh, I don't know if he can hear us or not. Oh. Uh, you know what? Yeah, he should be able to hear us yep. just fine. There know. he goes. So uh, yeah, we're just we can wave at him. He's hi. He's, he's good looking. <laughs> 
He's a good looking fella. <laughs> so we'll wave. Are you hearing us? I'm, I'm thinking he's like, he's shaking. Yeah. His, no here. Uh. All right. Um, all right. So, well, we're going to work out those issues with that. And, uh, all right. That's on. That's on. Um, Guys, if you can oh, hear me, I, yep. I can't hear you at all. I got uh, we you. can hear you now? I got you now. Are you hearing us? We got him. Yeah, we, we got hear... you. All right. All right. All right, we hear him. Maybe he's got the wrong thing up. Uh, darn it. How's... So we didn't have uh, number seven up there or whatever that was? Yeah, number seven is up. All right. So... And... Um, I got number seven. Up. What uh, what do you have on the magic wheel in there? All right, uh, Hang mag- on. we're we're getting there for a second. On Best the audio on the audio on the audio. Nope, nope. Go back to the you know magic what? Wheel. There it is. You should be able to nope. hear us now. Nope, nope. Yep. Oh, was that? Sad? Now I hear you. Yeah, hey, now it's guys. Uh, okay. Yep. Yep. There he is. That was my fault, uh, uh, Captain. Um, I had the uh, the one camera that is vacant right now. We're expecting another visitor here. I had that not in the stream. So. Ah, so there we are. So, uh, Peter, the uh, the introduction I just gave for you was astounding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for it, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best rehearsal ever. But uh, we, we, what we were alluding to was that um, there is a critter, uh, uh, there's a mammal out there that is critically, critically in, endangered and down to something like 20 of them left. Uh, it, it's a, a porpoise or a dolphin. Uh, there, and you guys, you guys are the, the ones looking over the sea, the sea shepherds. You guys are really doing some amazing work, um, out on the oceans, uh, for conservation and, and standing up to, to, to poachers and, and people fishing uh, illegally and improperly. Um, and, and, and these guys are falling victim to them. So what are, where are the numbers at for this creature? Well, thank you so much for having me on the show, Jamie, and Matt as well. I mean, really, the only reason we're able to be effective on the front lines is because people like you and your audience support the work that we do. And this is the most endangered marine mammal in the world. There's less than 20 of them. Uh, Some estimates are as low as as six left. What, What gives us some hope is that during the last Vaquita sighting survey that we participated in last year, we did see a number of mother and calf pairs. And, and that gives us hope that these vaquita can rebound, but it requires us being on the front lines every single day and pulling up illegal fishing gear that will trap these animals, will suffocate these animals if passionate and compassionate people do not intervene. Because they're mammals, they got to breathe, so they got to surface. If they get tangled up in these nets, that's it. That's uh, a painful way to go for them. And that's right. They're, they're mammals like us. So they need to breathe at the surface of the water. And so they get entangled in these invisible curtains of death, these uh, deep setted gill nets gill that nets. poachers use to catch another endangered creature, a fish co- called the totoaba, that they, they capture in order to harvest the swim bladder, which is, is shipped off to the black market in, in China. Mm. So they're in pursuit of one endangered animal while killing a critically endangered mammal at the same time, because these nets don't distinguish between species. They, they capture everything. They're invisible. And so these creatures swim in, they're caught and they drown. So, yeah. So these gill nets, I mean, how prolific is it? How big are these fleets out there doing these things with these gill nets? How many of these are you pulling in? So the poachers have dozens of boats and each gill net that they set can be hundreds of, of feet long. And so in the course of doing these campaigns over the past five years, we've pulled up over a thousand gill nets and we've freed over 4,000 animals from dolphins to sea turtles to totoaba fish that have and, and saved them, set them free, uh, saved them from death. There's actually uh, there was a cool little video you guys sent along uh, with the press release that kind of introduces uh, what you're doing right now in the project. Matt, I think it's in there. Okay. If you want to scroll down and click the video. This one right here? Uh, no, it's a video, oh. so it'll be in a video section. Oh, and, right. Uh, there it is. <laughs> That's background. Nope. There you go. It's in the video section. I'm looking. One more down. One more down. Oh, video clips. There it is. Okay. Oh, that's so sad. 
we're muted while it goes plays. But. Wow. This is as tense a situation as we can sort of have. Although the poachers have changed their ways of fishing and they're becoming more and more aggressive, we have had a huge effect out here. Honestly, donate. Yeah, <laughs> donate, um, donate, donate. Because <laughs> I mean, running those boats and and the it's not a it's not a, a small crew. How many vessels are in the 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 Sea Shepherd fleet right now? We have eight vessels that are operating globally. Two of them are off the coast of West Africa at the moment, where we're working to support governments to stop illegal fishing. And in the course of those partnerships, we've assisted seven. African coastal countries to arrest 54 vessels for illegal fishing and other fisheries crimes. Each one of these illegal fishing vessels is an illegal slaughterhouse that's been shut down. Uh, We have one vessel, the Sharpie, that has just arrived in the Vikita Refuge. We'll start this tremendous effort of pulling up ghost nets, nets that have been left behind by poachers in years previous and and pulling them out of the sea. Hmm. All in all, we have eight vessels and they're engaged all around the world, all seven seas, uh, conducting direct intervention efforts to save marine wildlife. So that uh, the Sharpie there, is that uh, that's the, the boat that you're captain of? The vessel that I captain is called the Bob Barker, named oh. after the Price is Right host of yes. many, many years. The Bob Barker. Animal, I love that. Of Thank animal you. rights fame. <laughs> I, I think many people remember him from the 1980s, ending yeah, yeah. every show by reminding people to spay and neuter their yeah. companion animals. Um, he's a, he was an incredibly generous man, is an incredibly generous man, and he's he's the one who, who purchased the vessel, donated the vessel that, that I captain. Okay. The Sharpie is oh. named after another very generous, compassionate man named Chris Sharp and he and his family have supported this effort to save the Vikita now for for a number of years, and and we're very proud to have a ship that that bears uh, the name of his family. That looks like a, a, a Coast Guard vessel. It's a former U.S. Coast Guard vessel, and, and it's been said that we have the largest private navy in the world, and <laughs> many of our vessels are, are formally uh, of the Coast Guard or, or of navies. Okay. Now there's in fact, another... the vessel that I, in fact the vessel that I captain often the Bob Barker actually used to be a whaling vessel mm-hmm. and so I, I've always said that that vessel has a karmic debt to live up to and then uh, by, by saving whales now for the past ten years it's it's doing its best to live up to that so Peter if I can ask what actually brought you to the point where you are now to become the captain of the Bob Barker what led you upon the path to what you're on now well when I was fourteen years old I saw a picture of a dead minky whale being pulled up the slipway of an 8,000 ton floating slaughterhouse uh, down in the Antarctic called the Nishin Maru, a ship that was targeting over 1,035 whales every every single year. And when I saw that image of that dead whale, it just shocked me to the core. I just couldn't imagine that whales were still being killed Mm. in in our time and, and our day. And when I realized that not only were whales being killed, but they were being killed in defiance of a global moratorium that banned whaling, I knew that the only way to really intervene was to join an organization like Sea Shepherd that was using direct action to get the job done. An organization that was measuring success by the number of lives that we were able to save and by the number of criminal operations that that we were able to shut down. Uh, if someone wanted to learn more about, you know, the Sea Shepherd, what you guys do, where, where are some of the resources that they can look into to, to do, their, do their own research and make up their own minds uh, to help save the whales and sea life? Because as Jamie said earlier, if, if everything in the sea dies, we die, right? So where can folks uh, go to find research and do their own research? I love it. Sorry, sorry, sorry excuse me. My, my dog's making you're good. You're bring good. Him, bring him to the camera. We, we oh, love we the love poopers. Dogs. We love the puppies. Oh. There she is. Oh. <laughs> we love the puppies. Oh, that's a cute pup. <laughs> and your his puppy's name? His bark is better than his bite. Oh. <laughs> and your but puppy's he, name he is? He is a rescue here from the, the city of Los Angeles. And what is our puppy's name? 
His name is Bowie. Oh, Bowie. <laughs> I like it. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, your website uh, where people can find out more. So what's, what's unique about Sea Shepherd is that our ships are predominantly crewed by volunteers. Yeah. So people can go onto our website and donate. They can go and volunteer and be on the front lines, pulling up nets every single day in the Vaquita Refuge. Um, and they can also learn more about these issues and spread the word as to what's happening to the Vaquita and, and other endangered uh, marine wildlife. And, and that website is www.seashepherd.org. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, there's, there's there's so much to unpack uh, with what you guys do on a daily basis, and I and Bowie's awesome. Don't worry, <laughs> Bowie's there fantastic. Is, there is so much work. There is so much work to be done. Yeah, and because uh, we've talked to, we've had several people from the the Sea Shepherd organization on. Yes, and they need volunteers for legal help and office help. And so mm-hmm. even if you're like, I couldn't go out on a boat. That's crazy. Um, but I do have some time, and I wouldn't mind helping. You guys need help. Uh, in all facets or, you know, getting out there and, and, and hands on with that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, there's lots of lots of ways people can help uh, monetarily is always a big thing because, I mean, you got big crews, you got big boats. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a, a cheap adventure a, at all, I'm sure. But, yeah, we've talked to Paul a couple of times and, and he's he's noted for saying, if the oceans die, we die. And right. that really stuck with me. Um, so we bring it up as often as often as, as we can. So, but so these these particular they're porpoises or dolphins. They're porpoises. Okay, so these porpoises, these porpi, uh, if they go away, so what? Well, a, the, the key right. is they're a key creature in the marine wildlife ecosystem okay. of the Upper Gulf of California, and and if the poachers were to wipe out the vaquita, they would continue to go on to wipe out the totoaba fish and we have no idea what effect would it would have on the marine ecosystem to remove one of these critical predators there's a cascade effect and what we're seeing is if you remove critical species like sharks for example out, out of the equation and and shark populations in the atlantic have fallen by 90 percent in the past 30 years the effect can be absolutely disastrous we need these apex predators to regulate the health of our ecosystem and, and an ecosystem is only as strong as as biodiversity of that mm-hmm. ecosystem. And I, and I would also say, if, if we can't save a creature as charismatic as the vaquita porpoise, okay. one, of the, one of the most adorable creatures you'll find anywhere in the Pacific, then what hope do we have of finding or being able to save a, an animal like the totoaba? Right. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just, it's so, it's so disheartening that it, it's the vaquita aren't the ones being hunted. They're just, it's like, uh, uh, just like a victim of circumstance, caught in almost? a crossfire, yeah. and, and it's like it, it's right. just and it's just the the greed of trying to catch these other fish uh, and, and be damned everything else that gets in the way, mm. um, and you're decimating this just and it, it's greed. It all comes down to to greed, really. Uh, and when you're dealing, Peter, when you're dealing with greedy people, uh, sometimes it, it seems to me as though they could be dangerous. A little video that we played. Um, it, it struck me, you guys were like, I don't know, was somebody shooting the hose at you or were you shooting the hose at uh, the poachers? What was what was going on in that scene? In that video, dozens of these small poaching boats were attacking our vessels. They were throwing Molotov cocktails onto the decks of the ship. Oh. Uh, our vessels have been fired upon. They've shot down drones that we've used to document their criminal activity. But we do sail into harm's way. But the reality is that these are greedy individuals and we speak the only language that they understand. And that's the language of profit and loss. Mm -hmm. And if we can cost their criminal operations money, then we can shut them down. So it's I remember, you know, Paul Paul has had hits out on him before, um, you know, and he's like other governments who support. Right. I remember um, that. I remember have 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 put out warrants for his arrest. And and it's just it's crazy. You guys are, are, are trying to. Save the freaking planet, and uh, they're, they're, it's gunning for you out of greed. It's just, it's disheartening. Um, uh, the greed. Well, well, thankfully, we do have the support of the Mexican government in the Vaquita Refuge. Good. And so now, on board our vessels, we do have the Mexican Navy on board. We do have Mexican federal police officers who are armed, who guard the ship, who guard our crew, and, and are there to protect us as we work to pull these nets out of the sea. So, Peter, what are we looking at here? These three boats uh, lined up. Is this? Are these the poachers? Can you see that? 
it, it, it looks like they have Totoaba fish on board there on deck. And drones are really critical to the operations that we're doing. We're monitoring this refuge. Any evidence that we gather, we pass on to, to the police, to the prosecutor's office, and to the Navy. And I think you mentioned earlier, Jamie, that we need all kinds of people to support our work. We need we need captains and engineers on our ships. We also need passionate volunteers who may never have been out to sea before, but who are willing to do the hard work of pulling these nets out of the sea. But we also need legal help. We need lawyers. We need communications professionals like yourselves to get the word out. We need teachers to educate the next generation of conservationists. I think what's important is the battle to protect our oceans, to defend animals, to speak for the voiceless, um, that's something that has to be sustainable. We need to be able to do this long term because we have to turn this tide of destruction. And for it to be sustainable, anybody who enters this battle has to enter with their passions, with the things that they're good at, with the things that they love to do. Mm. And so if you can help from a legal standpoint as well, we would certainly welcome that. And that's the kind of evidence like you saw on this image that we can capture turn over to the authorities, and hopefully get them behind bars. So now with, with COVID going on, uh, it's, it's some interesting things are happening on the planet. Uh, some turtles are, are having some really good days because uh, there's less people on the beach. Uh, there's less invasive things going on. Uh, but you guys have been slowed down a little bit uh, by COVID because you're following the rules and following the, the laws and the mandates and the restrictions put on you for working together and, and, and whatever. Um, has, has COVID given some advantage, some of the poachers who have been out there? And what, what impact has that had on what you're doing and what people are doing? Well, at Sea Shepherd, we have the responsibility for the safety of the vaquita. We also have the responsibility for the safety of our crew, for the safety of our partners from the Mexican government who come on board our ships. And so it's taken a little bit of time to get the ships out at sea. But the reality is that poachers don't stop because of a pandemic. And so neither can Sea Shepherd. Sure. And our concern is that with the economic downturn, that, that we may see more poaching activity in the vaquita refuge than we've seen in years previous. And that's why it was important to get there as soon as we possibly could. Mm. So I just, you know, it, it's, it, if you stop it, if you stop the demand for um, these bladders from these other fish, that's what uh, is going to the black market. Um, but how do you stop the demand for it? You know, how do you, you know, people like their shark tail soup or whatever that yeah. heck it is that they believe is going to help them. Uh, and it's, it's, yeah, if there was a way to cut off the demand for the bladder, you know, it's, it's, ah, I don't know. We, I don't have know to, but... we have to remember that this is a criminal market. Yeah. The, the killing of the Totoaba fish is illegal. This is a protected species. Then exporting it from Mexico to the United States or then from the United States to China, that violates a number of international agreements that protect mm -hmm. endangered species. I mean, this is a criminal enterprise and it's criminals engaged in it. So they're not going to respond to some kind of consumer boycott yeah. campaign. You can't buy Totoaba bladder at your local market, nor could you likely afford it. This These Totoaba swim bladders are worth more in weight than cocaine. And so what we need to see is strong enforcement. We need to see these criminal operations shut down. We need to see the ringleaders, the Al Capones in these networks arrested and prosecuted. And in the interim, we need to ensure that we can pull up these nets every single day, because if, if we're not pulling up those nets, then every day could be a Vaquita's last day. Right. I'd almost like to see more stringent, uh, you know, judi the judicial system step up and, you know, provide additional, you know, ramifications. You know, you're going to spend the you spend the next 10, 15, 20 years in jail for A, B and C. Right. And like, you know, it's it's almost not strong enough because the criminal enterprise almost seems to continue to grow. So they got to get stronger with the judicial system at the same point. It's just a well, thought. The three biggest know? smuggling enterprises in the world are, are drugs, guns and uh, wildlife and if you're if you're smuggling wildlife from say the african continent to southeast asia it, you're looking at maybe seven years in prison if you get arrested in singapore for smuggling ivory if you get arrested for smuggling cocaine i mean the punishment is a lot more stringent right. far more stringent than what we have here in the west and it just doesn't add up if the ivory then is more valuable than the drugs then of course you're going to go with the lower risk more high value product <laughs> and so we need to see wildlife crime treated as organized crime mm -hmm. and the networks that are behind the totoaba smuggling 
these are not just poachers. These are organized criminals. And these are the same kinds of crime syndicates that are involved in other types of trafficking crimes. Mm. Mm. So, uh, Peter, the um, – oh, I was going somewhere. So uh, <laughs> it just it just went away. I had a brilliant question. Oh, I hate that. I'm having a week, man. I'm having a, a week and a half. But uh, – Oh, crud. What was I going to – jeepers, creepers. Sam came in here, and now we're all uh, – <laughs> Now we're skew. off the rails. <laughs> ah. so, nice to meet you, Sam. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he can hear me. Yeah, he got you. Oh, okay. We got you. <laughs> you're live, Sam. Um, so what other hot spots are there? I mean, you're, you're, you're working with the, the porpoise here, but, uh, you, know, you know, you guys are around the globe. So what are some of the other projects that you guys are actively working on? We are. So uh, we presently have the Bob Barker in the country of Gabon in central West Africa. Gabon actually has the largest network of marine protected areas of any country around the African continent. And about a month ago, we assisted the Gabonese authorities to arrest two Chinese flagged trawlers for having over a ton of rays and ray fins on board. Uh, last year, the country of Gabon banned shark finning, the finning of rays, the finning of the first time that law was uh, implemented and those vessels a month later are still detained in port waiting for for their uh, judicial process so that was a huge success and working in gabon we, we've helped that country to arrest uh, 12 ships since we started working there um, four years ago and i think what's important is not only are we taking these poaching vessels off the sea where they can do no harm but uh, we're also causing a deterrent where we're preventing criminal operators from coming in. If they know that there's a patrolling force out there, that they don't, then the, the benefit does not outweigh the risk. And that's another thing we're achieving in the Bikita Refuge. The, if the poachers know that we're out there, they're less likely to risk their fishing nets. These are, these are, this is expensive fishing gear that they're losing when we pull them up. And so we're hoping to have a deterrent effect while also pulling up any nets that, that, that we do find. Wow. That, I, I remembered what I, where I was going. I don't know how I how this slipped out of my head. Tiger, Tiger King. Uh, it's like no, but let me let me let me get let me get there. So <laughs> anyway, be patient, Peter. Please be patient. But no, that that, that ridiculous show, the Tiger King. This would be uh, but brought but brought to light that there are more tigers in captivity uh, than there are in the wild. Um, are there are there vaquitas that are are in conservation in, in in captivity? Is there a way to keep this species going? Uh, since the numbers are, I mean, we're down. You said uh, twenty six left in the wild. Are they are they in captivity anywhere that the species is going to be preserved? There was an attempt made about two years ago to actually capture a vaquita in the wild to see if if, if that was an option, and that vaquita died after just a few days in captivity. Mm. Vaquitas and cetaceans do not respond well to to captivity, but they suffer immensely. These are animals that are used to tremendous ranges. They're highly intelligent creatures, and, and so that really isn't an option at all. The, the only option is to pull these nets out of the sea day by day and to get the criminal operations behind the, these illegal fishing operations behind bars. That's the only way to save the vaquita. And I'm convinced that if it wasn't for, for Sea Shepherds supported by the Mexican government working in the vaquita refuge every day, during this Totoaba season, for the past five years, then the vaquita would be gone already. There, there's no doubt in my mind that the vaquita would be extinct if it wasn't for sea shepherds supported by the Mexican government, supported by by all of you who, who ensure that the vessels go to sea. All right. Well, well, Peter, I, I thank you for your time uh, and, and sharing this story with us because we wanted to talk about it a little bit and, and dive into it a little bit with you. And uh, thanks for all the work you do putting yourself in harm's way out there and, and – Ah, uh, just pulling them nets up in the sun. That's got to be that's got to be hard work. So, uh, thank you for all the hard work that yeah. you're doing, and uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Good on you with the volunteers, just putting the their best foot forward. Appreciate yeah. it. Well, th- thank you so much for the kind words. I think as animal lovers, we can sometimes we know there's so much animal cruelty in the world. We can feel like how can we possibly save the world, right? But when we're pulling up one of these nets when we're rescuing an animal from abuse we can we can change the entire world for one individual creature and that's what keeps our crew going every single day on the decks of our ships every net we pull up is a, is, a, is basically a weapon disarmed every animal that's free from the net is an entire life saved and, and the entire world for that creature 
is saved. So thank you so much for having me on the show, for, for getting the word out there about what's happening with the Kita. And it's a pleasure to, to talk to fellow animal advocates. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah, we'll have you on again. We'll uh, just, uh, it's been a long time. It's been, we've been doing the show for a long, long time. We mm-hmm. talked to you a, a ton of years ago. So uh, glad you're still doing it. And uh, we'll check in again. We won't wait so long this time. Fair. <laughs> My pleasure to join anytime. So, so please reach out. Uh, I'll be on with uh, again. Maybe less, maybe less noise. <laughs> no, we love the doc. We love we'll, the doc. We'll we get it right doc, next man. time as well. You, you... <laughs> All, All right. right. Thank you so much. All right, Peter. Be well. Bye. Yay. Did All right. we have him on before or was it a different it was a we've di- had we've had like everybody from this season. I think we had so Paul cool. Watson. We had Paul Watson on. You were here yeah. when we did yeah. Captain Paul Watson. Yeah. Because he was a guy and and this was like before we were live. Um he uh he 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 was one of Paul Watson was one of the guys who started Greenpeace. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he felt Greenpeace wasn't doing enough <laughs> and wasn't active enough, uh wasn't uh fighting as hard as it should have been. So he left and, and started uh wow. started another organization and then finally and started Sea Shepherd. Yeah. So Paul is Paul's hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh yeah, he's 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 the man for Dang. sure. Yeah. So uh do they take volunteers? Like what do they do? Did he talk about that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just on their website. I mean, they need volunteers to, you know, do media stuff and to Wait, do seriously? legal stuff yeah. and then Wait, to be on their on the boats pulling I up wanna the nets. I want to be like on the boat and you I want to like they need shoot those. them. They, you can Not volunteer. Shoot them, like like do video. You want to shoot the water? Oh, oh I see. Take yeah. pictures like this? Yeah, or yeah. like do a, like a whole a, documentary kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. We can yeah. like interview them or like do yeah. something like a whole They do. Send them your resume and next time you're out in California. Is that where they are? Uh, he's in, he said he was in, uh, I think he said San Francisco or something. Uh, oh, sure. nice. I, he's, I'm there. I'm there frequently. Uh, he said he was, it was California. He mentioned California. Oh, nice. So, okay. Um, so once the next time you go out to California to, to work with your Blink-182 boys. <laughs> That's right. But it's volunteer. There's no can, pay involved. Yeah. You can go and you can, uh, I think it'd be cool. volunteer to take some pictures for yeah. them. Yeah. Or do like a whole little video. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to be on the boat and you like. Missed the, yeah. There was a really cool video that we, they oh. sent us that we shared uh, a moment ago too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'll can show it to you. It to I'll me? show it to you later. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so there you go. So that was, uh, thanks for that, Jane. Peter. It's always, yeah. it's always good to keep the word out there. It really yeah. is. Um, you know, because as a conservationist, as, as an animal lover, it's it's important to know that there are people out there fighting the good fight, you know? Yeah. And uh, here's the other thing. Um, it, it was Sam's here now, so we finally have somebody to pick on. Oh, right. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> are you sure? I hit two Every traffics. light. Two yeah. traffics. Two traffics. You hit two <laughs> traffics. <laughs> there was a uh, – well, because I go to, I was at work and I was like, I didn't get any of your messages. And I was like, okay, I hope they're not dead. And then I started crying in the car because I thought everybody was dead because nobody was responding to me. And then I was like, Sam, you're I'm so, not having a good day. You're so Sam. <laughs> Sam, you're so Sam. No, I was just thinking, I was like, if they were dead, what would I do? And like, Aww. I just started crying. <laughs> Aww. I would, I would cry too if we were dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, but well, thank you for your concern, Samantha. Yeah, I was concerned. I was like, okay, nobody's replying. I'm gonna start calling people. Like something's gonna happen, right? Because you were like, hey, you haven't said anything. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, I've said a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't get any. I don't know what's going on. I think my phone was acting up the other day, and I think it's acting up again. I thought I fixed it. It's uh, your phone. It's your phone. Yeah, blame it on the phone. No, uh, seriously, it is. I wasn't ignoring anybody. Blame it you on the look, rain. You can look at my phone. Blame it on the rain. Sorry, just breaking oh. into my. Uh, Millie Vanilli here for you. Uh, Sam, well, um, you know, you're here. Yeah. Which means uh, we got somebody to pick on. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to do this, and Matt's going to dig into his email. I got it. Oh, no. I pulled it up. I Back didn't even get fiction. an email. You decide. All right, there you go. <laughs> Samantha. Hello. <laughs> there are three facts. Two of them are true. you got to play the song. One Mm-mm. is uh, absolutely false. Uh, created Matt muted me. <laughs> uh, created by me like earlier when I should have been recording the jun- junior varsity volleyball game. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's when you said, "Yeah, you're, I know you're at school. I thought you saw that the volleyball game started." Yeah, I, I did. Thought, I got oh. a notification. Oh yeah, and well, I, was, I meant uh, I meant like you're at school, like you're. I, you were actually at school. At I school. did. I was. I was launching the program from here. So oh it was funny. okay. But I, I should have been doing that while I was writing. Uh, one of these fake facts. Two of these facts are absolutely true. 
One is uh, completely false, created by me when I should have been filming the volleyball game. <laughs> uh, Sam, your your mission is to ascertain which of these fa- mm. facts is, is the, the false, false one. Fact. And I, had, I don't know which one All is right, false. I stopped, the, yeah. I stopped the music, Matt, so you can yeah. bring it up so I can bring up Thank the – Thank you. Uh, Appreciate it. All right, so He's you're ready. He's getting the uh, ready. Uh, yes, like, he is. Actually, he is. All right, yes, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Little Just kidding. Right. <laughs> oh, guys, I dyed my hair. Yeah, I was yeah, going to mention yeah. that. Samantha, yeah. you look nice. Oh, uh, your hair you. is very – it's myself. dark like your soul now. Yep. <laughs> All right. Are you <laughs> – <laughs> Look at that. Your hair is dark like your soul. That's not a very nice thing to say. I'm it's sorry. It's okay. It's kind of true. It's kind of funny. It's it was funny. True. You know it. You've said worse. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So headline number one. Sam, are you ready? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Never. So mountain lions spotted stalking children as they played in California neighborhood. Okay, that sounds like it could be <laughs> that sounds like it could be true. Headline number two. Hawks are hunting house cats with five felines plucked from their neighborhood. Maybe. Mm. And number three, wild bear breaks into Alaska Zoo and kills alpaca. Man, alpaca. these are really dark alpaca. stories. Is it kind of did just he, like Sam's hair. Spell yeah. it alpaca. Yeah, A L P A C A. It's spelled correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So headline number one again, Sam. Are you ready? Okay. Mountain lion spotted stalking children as they played in California neighborhood. Sounds plausible. Headline number two, hawks are hunting house cats with five felines plucked from their neighborhood. And number three, wild bear breaks into Alaska Zoo and kills alpaca. Are alpacas eat, in eat Alaska? Eat your lasagna, Tina. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> I'm trying to think. All right. One does sound like it's true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which one? Which? It would. They also, they're all very sad. <laughs> Two of them uh, they sound are, like they, they are true. The other one sounds false. That's, that's they are, they the are pretty dark, it. though. I'll, I'll give that they're to all, you. They're all kind of, yeah. They're <laughs> okay, so that's sad. the theme is, mm-hmm. is animals uh, killing things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, which Except is, the mountain lion, it didn't say that they kill, it killed the kids. It said it stalked them. Stalking. Well, yeah. Yes. But that stalked. does sound plausible. Okay, so out with it. Which okay, is it? I'm going to say number... No pressure. Three is, is the, the false one. False one? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, was it number two? Uh, 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 was it one? I don't know. I don't know. You don't we're down to, wrote him. No, I know, <laughs> but we're down to a 50-50, and Matthew doesn't know. I have the slightest clue. I didn't, I didn't tell him. Okay, whatever Matt says, I'll say. So you're down to a 50-50, Matt. Is it, uh, which are the, what are the two available still? You know, the mountain lion spotted stalking children as they play in the neighborhood in California. Uh-huh. And, and then, then the hawk is, hawks are hunting house cats with yeah. five felines plucked from their neighborhood. So, okay. You know, if it, if I was a betting guy uh-huh. and I'm really I'm really not, I'd still go hawks hunting uh okay, the that's kitty what cats. I was is go true with or too. false? Is false. Wild E Coyote. Super genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had it down to a 50-50. So. Yeah. yeah. I was still going number 2, that was but my second oh, answer, so. <laughs> yeah. That was my second answer. But there was no there were no misspellings. It was all spelled right. <laughs> now he checks. He checks now. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm doing it really quick. And I here shouldn't you go. have told him my strategy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah. Well, rest in peace to that alpaca. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A bear breaking into the, I didn't, I didn't pull up the stories because I really didn't want to, because they're kind of grim. Yeah. Security is kind of lax at the Alaskan Zoo. Yeah. I'm it's, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. So the mountain lion spotted stalking children. That's kind of scary. You know? Yeah. Everything going on in California, what else do you need to worry about? Yeah, fires. Wildfires, volcanoes. <laughs> mountain lions. I did go, I went to like a hiking trail in California and there was a sign like before you go in to the trail or whatever, the park, the trail, whatever, there was a sign of like, if you see a mountain lion, what to do. Mm. And I'm like, that's so weird because like we don't have that here. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. All right. So, uh, and from there, yes. Um, really, the o- only other thing uh, available would be uh, <laughs> who's bad? <laughs> Dang, we're done already. Yeah, you were late. I-, I was only twenty minutes late. We usually go it's for an time hour, for you guys. The bad animal joke of the week. Who's bad? All right, bad animal joke of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> are you Are you ready for it, Samantha? Maybe. All right. You gotta keep playing the music. It's not as fun when you so don't have the music. Uh, I'll explain later. Facebook is all cranky about music. Yeah. So. Oh. All right. Okay. So, I get it. um, 
What do you call an alpaca, Samantha, with a carrot in each ear? <laughs> what do you call an alpaca with a carrot in uh, each ear? I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, nothing. You can call it anything because it's not going to come. I can't hear you anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. Ha, ha. All right. There better be another one. Uh, what? <laughs> you could say that with anything. I know. Well, I'm, I was looking for alpaca jokes, right? Yeah, because that one died? Anyway, yeah. We're focus, really dark today. Let's focus yes, on the yeah. funny here, Sam. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, this isn't good for the grape. What did What did the grape say? They did surgery on a grape. When When the alpaca stood on it, it little it let out a little wine. It let out a little wine. Oh my yes. god, you guys! Hey, uh, I had nothing to do with any of this. <laughs> One more. One All right, more. I got two. I got a couple more. Yes. Uh, what do you call it when an alpaca sings? Mm. I don't know. Alpaca. Capella. Ah. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know if I said that right. But you got the you alpaca. Got the alpaca, alpaca, alpaca. Hey, road trip. Yeah. Alpaca, my bags. Yeah. Uh, all right. One last one. One last right, one. Go all for right. it. What do you call an alpaca taking over the world? Ooh. It's the same thing we no, do. Everything, Pinky. Know. Oh God. What do you call? Thing what do you we call do every night? What do you call when the alpacas take over the world? I don't know. The apocalypse. Yeah. It's the same thing we do every night, Pinky. <laughs> Try to, to take, take over, over the world. world. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh. You guys need some funny ones. Those, Those were funny. funny. <laughs> Says the old guys, right? <laughs> I already knew one of them. <laughs> All right, Samantha. Tell people a little something, something. Okay, so... You can, visit, vi- you can visit our website, www.animaltalkradio.com. You don't need the www. <laughs> you I just do like need to the see www. It. Www. You no. kind of do, yeah. Uh, oh, you can just type it. You can type it, it, it in now. It. You don't need www anymore. Sure, no. <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> um, and then follow us on our social media pages, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all at Animal Talk Radio. Merch site, wearingfunny.com. Yeah, there it is. YouTube, Animal Talk TV. Yes. Yes. Go, that girl. is that is how it works. That is, go and, like and it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Yay. We did it. I was only here for. 20 I used minutes. to be addicted to the hokey pokey, but I I turned my life around. And you turned yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See, that got her a lot. There was no animal joke. The alpaca was uh, addicted to the hokey pokey, but he turned his life around. There you go. <laughs> we made an alpaca joke. All right, there you go. Uh, it's uh, Yeah, until uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment. We appreciate everybody being here. Uh, thank you to our guest, Peter Hammerstick. Peter. Yes, yeah. from, from uh, the seashepherd.org. The Easy name of his say. boat. The Bob, uh, the Bob Barker, yeah. yeah. I thought he was. I thought he was on the Sharpie. I knew he was on the Barker before, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So the Sharpie was is a cool looking book. But yeah. anyway, uh, see shepherd dot uh, Way to get involved and donate. Uh, save those little baby porpoises, please. Because uh, man, that's uh, it, it'll be a tragedy if they disappear from the planet. It'll be very sad. Uh, Till next time, please have an exotic week. And kiss your wild thing for me.